Acts chapter 5, verse 27 to 32. When they had brought him, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have sailed Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The famous 16th century church reformer, Martin Luther, once claimed that whenever and wherever God builds a church, the devil builds a cathedral. And just like God's churches in this world, the devil's cathedral also have choirs. But unlike God's church choirs, who sing in harmony, SATP, four parts, or even three parts, or even two parts, they all sing in harmony. But the devil's choirs sing only in discordant voices, which means no harmony, no melody, no chorus. Each member sings his or her own solo part. Moreover, the devil's anthem, if you are curious what kinds of songs are chosen uh, by the devil's choir, only one rule. No song should have only first person singular pronoun. I, throughout, only I in the word. There is no third person pronoun, he or she or they. There is no second person pronoun, you, singular or plural. There is not even first person plural we. Every singer just intentively focuses on I to the exclusion of all else. This reminds me of a true story. During the American Civil War, the commanding general of the Union Army Ulysses S. Grant, General Grant, he once admitted, I only know two tunes. One is Yankee Doodle, the other is not. I only know two songs. One is Yankee Doodle, which is our song, okay? The winner's song, the Union Army song. The other, he refused to even name it. He just simply said, the other is not Yankee Doodle. Which means I only know my own song and the others are not my own song. That's all. First person singular I is the focus. It goes without saying that the commanding, you know, the commanding power of the devil's church. If you love to sing the devil's anthem, which contains only first person, you know, first person singular pronoun, only I, it goes without saying that those churches have no place for God. Because who idolize the first person singular I? 
there cannot be any higher authority outside the self, S-E-L-F. If you idolize, if you worship I, I am all, oh, I'm, I'm God, so to speak. There cannot be any higher authority than you. Well, that is the reason why Peter Barney's famous play, it is called The Ruling Class. There is a character in that famous play. His name was Earl of Bruton. When that character was asked, you know, that character is a bizarre character because in the play, he functions almost like a god. Okay? But when he was asked how he knew he was God, that character replied, very simple. When I pray to God, I find myself, I'm talking to myself. When I pray to God, I find I'm you know, talking to myself. That's why I'm God. I'm, I'm only talking to myself when I pray. Now you see why the devil loves to hear this chorus. Using only first person singular I in the song. Why he loves it? Because by singing such song, it gives you know people who sing the illusion that he or she is self-contained and self-sufficient. God is no longer needed. That person is self sufficient, self contained. There is no need for God. That is why in devil's churches, all the songs are concentrated on first person singular part. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, it is to our world where the devil's chorus finds its strongest forte that Peter's word in Acts 5 are directed. Today we read from the Acts of the Apostle, especially about Peter's words. Peter's words are directed to those people in this world who love to sing you, who love to sing the devil's song, which means that who love to idolize, worship, first person, singular art. We are told in Acts 4, we don't read it. But if you are interested, you can go back and see it. Previous chapter, chapter 4 of the Acts of the Apostles, we are told, soon after Easter, the apostles began, the disciples of Jesus began preaching that the Jesus crucified is risen from the dead. This is Easter message. In an attempt to stop this proclamation, the Jewish authorities issues a blanket prohibition that the apostles may not preach in the name of Jesus any longer. They issue orders to forbid this practice. The apostles, of course, disregard such orders. And no wonder they got, you know, arrested. But they were miraculously, in chapter four, miraculously released from the prison by an angel of the Lord. And soon afterwards, the second day, they returned to the temple to preach the same kind of message. So as our reading from today, Acts 5 begins, the apostles are arrest arrested again. This is the second time. And this time, of course, they were charged for a direct disobedience to the Jewish councils strict orders because they the first time they can say we do not know there are such restrictions but the second time there is no excuse the issue they have already issued strict orders not to do it the second time they were asked why you continue to do this we have forbidden you peter and the apostles response to this charge it's like coming to the thrones of the authority. As I said, the reply, the answer is something 
you know, the devil's church, those people who choose to idolize the first person singular I need to listen. This is Peter's answer. Why we continue to do this? Because we must obey God rather than any human authority. That is Peter and the apostles' answer, probably in unison. We must obey God rather than any human authority. Peter and the apostles here claim that they are not, you know, working outside of any human bond. They claim that they are working for the sake of one absolute authority, and that of absolute authority is God. This response is actually proclaimed again and again in the Bible. The Bible says again and again from cover to cover, we are not our own. God is God and we are not God. God is the absolute of all absolutes. And that neutralizes all other absolutes. Except from God, there is no absolute in this world. That is the basic message from cover to cover in the Bible. So brothers and sisters, if this message is true, I submit to you that there is a threefold mandate. Threefold mandate actually repeated in the Bible again and again. For those people who refuse to worship, to idolize the first person singular I. If you are not such people, you must listen to the threefold mandate. First, please God above all. Let God happy above all things. Secondly, serve God above all. Thirdly, Obey God above all. Please God above all. Serve God above all. Obey God above all. To please God means to seize the moment. Take the opportunity to put one's present at risk. To serve God means to sacrifice the moment and to put one's future at risk. And to obey God means to surrender the moment and to put one's past at risk. Our past, our present, our future will be at risk if you choose to please God above all, to serve God above all, and to obey God above all. There is a risk, but you have no other choice. Brothers and sisters, when we are pleasing God above all, serving God above all, and obeying God above all, we suddenly discover a tremendous freedom. We are free from the fear that somehow the first person singular I won't be able to do it all, have it all, and be it all. If you idolize the first person singular I, there is a great fear. And that fear is somehow you cannot do it. You will bump into situation that you need someone to help you. That your eye cannot do it all, cannot be it all, cannot have it all. There are so many occasions you will feel like that. And that is the fear. But if you serve, if you try to please God, serve God, obey God above all, and relinquish your, you know, this obsession about first person singular I, you have a freedom, freedom from the fear that your I cannot function for you. When we surrender the authority over our own lives to God, when we admit that there is a higher authority outside the self, when we finally confess that God is God and we are not God, we open ourselves to the tidal wave of the 
divine compassion and love. So I urge you to please God, to serve God, obey God above all things during this Easter season. Let us become an expression of God's strength. Let us become an expression of God's love and let us become, above all else, the witness that this I is not everything. God is everything. That is the message for the Easter people. Amen. I will pray to the Chinese congregation.